How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm working on an Isuzu D-Max. It's got a 3 liter engine in it. Year is 2010. Engine warning light on and no power present with the vehicle. It's completely dead. No performance and the customer wants to have this checked over. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how I diagnosed and fixed this fault. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we did is I brought it for a very quick road test. Limp home mode was activated, engine light was on. So I pretty much turned around straight away and brought it into the workshop. We've confirmed that the customer complaint is exactly right. P0404 EGR control circuit range slash performance was one code. And then the other code was P0401 EGR insufficient flow detected. So clearly we have an issue with the EGR and we need to determine what that is. is is it a problem with the wiring or the commanding of it or is it a problem with the EGR itself is it a mechanical or is it an electrical problem these are the thoughts that we have straight away when we see these fault codes so P0404 for example that can be an electrical or a mechanical fault the fault code can be logged if the commanded position of the pentel on the EGR does not meet the actual position. So in this case, if you have a bi-directional control, you can see the actual versus the desired readings on the EGR. So what that pentel is doing, you can command it on and off. You can do a diagnosis pretty fast on the likes of these. In my case, I had the commanding of the EGR accessible to me in the scan tool, but I didn't have the readings. There was no readings of the um, actual position versus the desired position. It wasn't on the scan tool on this, unfortunately, but it didn't matter because we can do our own tests anyways, and we can use our multimeter, we can use our leads, and we can do some testing of the um, component directly down with the uh, harness connected to the EGR and the harness removed. We can do some very quick and simple simple tests to rule out what the problems are. So when doing component testing, what I'm doing here, I do have the uh, plug connected, I'm back probing. You can remove the plug and do checks with the ignition on um, and just check at the different pins and see what readings you're getting. So you wanna be checking a uh, voltage supply. On this one, it's the red wire and the earth, so pin number one. And what I'm looking for is five volts on my multimeter. And I'm, am I getting a five volt reference down to that? And the answer is yes. So I, I get the correct reading on that voltage supply test. The next one I wanna do is the signal test. So that's a black and gray wire. It's pins two and three. Now for this test, I have the engine running. It's at idle. And there is a range that you're expecting to see in the multimeter here, anywhere from 0 0.3 to 2.8 volts. So that's a big ranging. Um, of a reading that you would be expecting but the reason for that is as the EGR opens and closes the voltage reads different so this voltage at idle is 0 0.9 bang that's exactly what we expect to see but when you command on the scan tool that is for this one when you command it doesn't change so the EGR is doing absolutely nothing we have a 0 0.9 steady and we don't have any voltage increase and that is because there is no change in the actual EGR. That pintle is not opening and closing like it should. So now that you've confirmed that the EGR has failed, you do have a couple of options. If it's your own one, you can go ahead and you can strip it all down and see if you can clean it out and whether it was just carbon build up and you get it to move again or whether that potentiometer had failed and electrically it's just not working anymore. They're the checks that you can do if it's your own one. If it's a... A professional work environment like this one here you might want to have a chat with the customer explain to them that you can put some labor time into stripping it down and potentially you might have some success in putting it back together depending on time frames costings and part availability and how much the part costs there are all the options you got to weigh up in this case it was simply the customer wanted it back as fast as possible you've got some warranty new EGR went in and we put it all back together. The removal process, very simple, four bolts, remove it out. So EGR came, compared it, made sure the part was correct, everything looked good. I cleaned up all the um, existing surfaces where it's mating to, made sure that there was no carbon anywhere sitting that would cause any issues. We tightened it all up, reconnected the connector, 
cleared the fall codes in some cases you have to uh, reset the EGR position on it with the scan tool and then bring it for a road test so I'm just on the final road test with this vehicle now I have the engine light off I have the faults cleared and I am just making sure the performance is back in this vehicle it was kicking into limb home mode as those lights came on and everything was restricted uh, as you can see now there's no lights on and I do have full performance back with the vehicle we've done our components checked on that old EGR and we put in the new EGR and we have found and fixed this issue And now that I have got the test drive pretty much all done, I'm gonna to return to the workshop and give this vehicle back to the customer. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna pull this part off here. And we're going to have uh, an inspection on the inside of this valve and see how bad it is. Stands down, and depending on and the amount it wants to be open or closed, that's how that operates. And this should be nice and free. So, what we're looking for here. This goes for any of them. Let me just change the light position. So what we're looking for here is when I push on this side, a very smooth and steady movement. And it's not at all, so that's jamming on me. So this is so um, clogged that it doesn't want to open. From what I see right here and what I see right here, I hope you can see in there pretty good. Might get an extra light. That's not even very good. That is very, very clogged up. So after a bit of a struggle, we have um, got it out. This is a much better look inside now. And this unit in here. So this part in here opens and closes and you can see this port. Like that. So there's lots of build up there, lots of areas that need cleaning. But very, very doable to clean it all out. And that is it.
And that is it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. If you like seeing um, the parts that have failed being broken down and more in detail, make sure you comment down below and give this video a thumbs up. Would greatly appreciate if you did. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.